It just so happens that in the 1970s and 80s, the wild horse population of the northern United States was getting a bit out of hand. Largely unchecked by natural predators, many wild horse populations grow at rates of 18 to 25 percent per year. This unregulated growth can overtax vegetation and affect herd health, as well as native wildlife populations. The Wild Free Roaming Horses and Burrows Act of 1971 requires the U.S. Bureau of Land Management, the BLM, and USDA Forest Service to manage these free roaming herds for a thriving natural ecological balance. To ensure the sustainability and health of both horse herds and the public lands they roam, and to reduce the number of animals requiring either adoption or long-term care in holding areas, managers began to explore fertility control as an alternative management technique. From 1978 to the 1980s, the Bureau of Land Management worked through a series of research contracts focusing primarily on development of a chemosterilant for the wild stallions. In the early 1990s, research then turned to silicone implants in mares in an effort to achieve fertility control. Although both routes indeed produced fertility control, they had too many drawbacks and were eventually abandoned. Finally, a National Park Service research team on Assateague Island National Seashore turned to an immunocontraceptive agent called Porcine Zona Palisida, or PZP which had already been reported to block fertilization in dogs, rabbits, and primates. Experimental PZP application on the wild horses of Assateague Island commenced in 1988, resulting in promising reductions in the pregnancy rates of mares, and by 1994, population growth began to stabilize solely through the use of PZP immunocontraception. Porcine Zona Pellicida has been successfully applied to control fertility and limit the size of several small populations of wild horses on eastern barrier islands since the early 1990s. Population level field trials of an injectable time release pellet form of PZP that will allow almost two years of fertility control with a single treatment are currently underway in many western herds. U.S. Geological Survey researchers are investigating the potential behavioral impacts of fertility control treatments, as well as population dynamics and demographics in these herds. In addition, the three agencies are cooperating on population-level studies of the efficacy of PZP in several western horse herds. In these studies, population growth rate is the response variable. Now, I'm sure that you're curious how this porcine zona pellicida, or PZP, actually works. Under the How PZP Works section, it states, In order for sperm to attach to the ovum and fertilize the egg, there must be complementary proteins on both the surface of the sperm and the zona pellicida, or ZP, of the ovum. PZP acts as a foreign protein against which the treated mare produces antibodies. Thus, the PZP fertility control agent is actually a vaccine. Again, this fertility control agent is actually a vaccine, which creates an antibody and destroys the protein structure of the reproductive organs and sperm. These antibodies attach to the mare's zona sperm receptors on the ovum and block fertilization. Domestic pig ovaries, obtained from slaughterhouses, are minced and the PZP is obtained from screening filtration. An adjuvant is mixed with the PZP to enhance its effectiveness when it is injected into the mares intramuscularly. Once injected, it causes an immune response making the mare infertile. Over time, the antibody titers fall and fertility returns. With the liquid vaccine, a booster injection can be given at 10 months to raise the titers back to the infertile range. This can be done each year for at least four years, after which time the effects may be more likely to become permanent. For this reason, 
Current individual level field trials involve only one to four years of treatment. Now that you understand that the concept and definition of vaccination goes way beyond just a viral or disease immunization process, and in fact can be specifically designed and genetically altered to create the desired suppression and sterilization of its injected host, and for that matter the breakdown of most individual or group bodily functions, many of these crazy things that you might be hearing around the way it shouldn't sound quite so crazy anymore. And, just out of curiosity, what would happen if you replaced the word horse with the word human? Well, I was curious about this myself, and I wondered if indeed there were human versions of this sterilization vaccination process. And what I found was astounding. Hundreds and hundreds of U.S. government patents reared their ugly heads, declaring drugs, vaccines, and methods to halt reproductive function in all life forms, but especially in humans and animals. Perhaps the most frighteningly comparable of these patents to what the USGS has accomplished in the horse population is this one, published March 10, 2011. It is entitled, Lonidamine Analogs for Fertility Management. It states that fertility management can include administering to the subject one or more doses of a compound according to Formula One so as to reduce fertility in the subject. Fertility management can also include administering an effective amount of the compound to impair Sertoli cell function in a male subject, inhibit spermatogenesis in the subject, reduce testes weight in the subject, reduce ovary weight in a female subject, reduce serum progesterone in the female subject, and impair ovarian follicle function in the female subject, causing reversible fertility in the subject. This sounds familiar. In order to return fertility, the method can include ceasing administration of the compound to the subject so as to return fertility in the subject. The compound can also be administered for irreversibly sterilizing the subject. But in this case, the subject is a man or woman. Under paragraph 1, it states that the present patent application is a continuation in part of these U.S. patents and claims benefit to other U.S. provisional applications for which the applications of those patents are incorporated herein by specific reference in their entirety by specific reference. Paragraph 2 then states that this invention was made with government support, awarded by the National Institutes of Health. The government has certain rights in the invention. In other words, it will profit from this invention. The present invention relates to novel or unique analogs of lonidomine. In particular, some of these novel analogs are useful in sterilizing males and females and inhibiting reproduction potential. such as reducing fertility in a subject for a period of time and then restoring fertility. Such a fertility management can include administering to the subject one or more doses of a compound according to Formula One so as to reduce fertility in the subject and for causing reversible fertility in the subject. In order to return fertility, the method can include ceasing administration of the compound to the subject so as to return fertility in the subject. In another embodiment, the compound can be administered in an effective amount for irreversibly sterilizing the subject. This can include one or more doses to impart sterility. 
And in the modulating fertility section, it states that the compounds described herein can be used in managing male and female fertility. The compounds can be administered in one or more doses to inhibit fertility for a period of time or to sterilize the male or female. GMZ, which is a novel or unique indazole carboxylic acid derivative, has been shown to be a reversible inhibitor of male spermatogenesis. It was found that 100% infertility was achieved in 7 out of 7 proven fertile male rats 3 weeks following a single oral dose of 6 mg of GMZ. Fertility returned by 9 weeks in only 4 of the 7 animals. 100% fertility returned in 4 of the 6 animals that became infertile at a single oral dose of 3 mg. Paragraph 259 states, the patient to be treated with the compounds of the present invention can be any animal and is preferably a mammal such as a wild or domesticated animal like cats or dogs or a livestock animal like horses cows pigs sheep or humans well now wait a minute well, why would this patent refer to a human as a mammal or in this case an animal when we visit the U.S. Code of the United States Government, under Title VII, which is Agriculture, and we go to Chapter VI, Insecticides and Environmental Pesticide Control, under Chapter II, Subsection 136, we come to the Definitions section, where the government defines under Paragraph D the term animal. It states here that the term animal means all vertebrate and invertebrate species, including but not limited to man, and other mammals, birds, fish, and shellfish. So the government actually defines man as an animal when talking about pest control. But wait a minute, I thought a man was a person. Oh, but wait a minute, under paragraph S it states that a person, or the term person, means any individual, partnership, association, corporation, or any organized group of persons, whether incorporated or not. Huh. So, a man is not necessarily a person, according to government legal code. Just below that, under paragraph T, the government defines what a pest is any insect rodent nematode fungus weed or two any other form of terrestrial or aquatic plant or animal life or virus bacteria or other microorganism except viruses bacteria or other microorganisms on or in living man or other living animals which the administrator declares to be a pest a pest being an animal and an animal being a man. And so we understand that by looking into U.S. code, human animal management, the management of the people of the earth are no different than the management of the livestock, insect, and other life forms on the earth. We are, according to U.S. code, no different than cattle, or for our purposes, wild horses. I guess the only question I have about paragraph 259 here is whether I'm a wild or domesticated human. 